<clears throat> Thought for the day, brothers and sisters. Today I was reading in the book of Second Temp uh, Second Peter chapter two, verses six to eight, where we have the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah as a picture of what's what's going to happen to the ungodly, and how Lot was saved because he was a righteous man. Today I wanted to speak about Sodom and Gomorrah. Historically, these cities were destroyed in Genesis chapter 19 because of two heinous sins that often go together. They are pride and sexual immorality. Often when we as individuals or as a nation become too proud of who we are, what we are, what we look like, sexual immorality is not too far behind. The key verse I wanted to look at, though, in Genesis chapter 19 was verse 26, where it says that Lot's wife looked back and became a pillar of salt. Salt was often used in the Bible as a picture of judgment, God's judgment. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Luke chapter 17, verses 32 and 33 says, Remember Lot's wife. He who tries to save his life here on earth will lose it. Those who lose their life for the sake of Christ will save their lives. Now, first and foremost, I want to remind us all that we all are what we are by the grace of God. We are not to look at the sins of others, what's going on in our nation, self-righteously. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9 tells us, if it wasn't for the grace of God, the mercy of God, we would all be like Sodom. We would all be like Gomorrah. The Apostle Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, that he was what he was by the grace of God. And we, we need to be reminded of that and be humble. We only are what we are by the grace of God. But Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt because she looked back at Sodom and Gomorrah, her affections with, with the world. Too often Christians, too, become useless and show themselves not truly to be of Christ because their affections are too much with this world. First John chapter 5, verse 19 tells us that the whole world is under the sway of the devil. We are not to be a part of this world system. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, we are told that we are to set our minds on things above, not on the things of this earth. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 tells us that we are to be transformed in the renewing of our minds, not to be conformed to this world. My friends, this world is not our home. We're told in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11, that we are to abstain from this world, worldly lust, the things in this world, as sojourners and pilgrims. If we are truly in Christ, we are just passing through. This world should not have our affections. It should not have our our attention, so to speak. Helen Lamell was an old Christian writer. In 1918, she wrote a song, and it was called, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, and when you do, the things of this world will grow strangely dim. My friends, today, we look at the landscape of what's going on in our world today, or here in America, and it is sad. But this is the world. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17 tells us we are not to be friends with the world and the things of this world. If we do, James chapter 4, verse 4 tells us we are enemies of God. Sadly, there are many who profess to be Christians who are so in intertwined with what's going on in the world that they become useless for the kingdom of God. We become too earthly minded to be of any heavenly good. My brothers and sisters, I am not innocent and perfect in this myself. I know what's going on in the world. I see what's going on in our country, what's going on in our societies, the grief and the hopelessness and the anger, the bitterness that's going on. But the answer is not looking at this world, but looking to Christ. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he walked this earth, I'm often reminded in my own personal life in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, when he got up early in the morning, what did he do? Did he worry about what was going on in the world, the Twitter feed, what was going on in cable news? Was he worried about 
Pontius Pilate and what Herod was up to, the leaders of his day? No. Mark chapter 1, verse 35 tells us early in the morning he got up to go into a mountain and to pray and commune with his Father. See, we are to imitate Jesus Christ. And when Christ was on this earth, while he walked this earth, he knew that this, home, this world would not, was not his home. When he was before Pontius Pilate, in John chapter 18, verse 36, when he was ready to be crucified, he said, My kingdom is not of this world. My friends, let's not make this world our kingdom. Our kingdom is in heaven. We're here to represent Christ as ambassadors for him. We read that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 to 21, especially where we have the ministry of reconciliation to the world, reconciling the world to God through Christ as ambassadors for Christ. An ambassador is someone who represents, goes to another country as an ambassador, as a foreigner there from another country. So our citizenship, as the Apostle Paul tells us, is truly in heaven. When we are too earthly minded, we're not going to be of any heavenly good. My brothers and sisters, as I said, I am not perfect and innocent in this myself at all. But I also remind myself of the scriptures, meditating on the word of God, letting it direct my steps, realizing, as I said before, I'm just a pilgrim here, realizing I'm only am what I am by the grace of God. If it wasn't for the grace of God, I would be like Sodom and Gomorrah myself. Sodom and Gomorrah is a picture of this world and what's going to happen to the ungodly. I grieve over what's going on, but I tell you, honestly, my friends, I don't blame the courthouse, the White House, the United States Capitol. Much of the blame is at the feet of the church. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 14 and 15. Jeremiah said all the ungodliness that was going on in the days of Jerusalem back then was because of the prophets in the house of God. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17 tells that judgment tells us that judgment begins where? Not in the courthouse or the White House, in God's house. Judgment begins with the house of God. Too many people who profess to be Christians are so worldly minded, so worried about the things of this world. We need to proclaim Jesus Christ. As the Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 4, chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. He gloried nothing but in the cross of Jesus Christ. He said circumcision and uncircumcision means nothing. What really matters is a new creation. God bless you all this day, my brothers and sisters. Keep your mind off the things of this world and keep your mind on the Lord Jesus Christ. Take care.